Hi, I'm Clarissa Mall, producer and moderator of The Bulletin. Here's a short clip from one of our segments in this week's episode. To hear the whole conversation, visit the link in our show notes or search for The Bulletin on your favorite podcast platform. Lucy Jones, welcome to The Bulletin. Thank you so much, Clarissa. It's really lovely to be here. So Lucy, you are a nature writer, and I'm going to have to hold myself back from spending our entire conversation talking about serotonous pine cones and fungi, Uh, but I want to focus on the work that you have done recently and how it intersects with the natural world. What prompted you to write a book about motherhood as a nature writer? Sure. Um, It's a a great question, I guess. Um... I, I, I do get called a nature writer and I'm definitely very preoccupied with the rest of the living world and, and have written a lot about, um, I guess, ecology in the past. Um, but I suppose when I became a mother and experienced pregnancy and childbirth and early motherhood, um, it felt so interesting and big and bewildering and underwritten and under-recognized as a human experience that I could have not write about it. It was just never going to, I had to write about it to make sense of it. Um, and I suppose, yeah, while nature is often my subject, you know, whatever, I, I'm, I'm, I'm very curious, so whatever kind of becomes an obsession is my subject. Um, and that was trying to make sense of becoming a mother in today's society. Um, and what that meant and why the kind of the bigness of the experience for me existentially, physically, psychologically, socially, spiritually felt so, yeah, so big in comparison to how small I felt it had been presented to me as. You use this word matrescence. It's in the title of your book. You use it throughout your book. Um, as opposed to maternity or motherhood, does do we need a new term? Is is that kind of uh, realizing the bigness of what you were encountering? Did it require you to use new language to describe what was happening? So I found the word matrescence, which if any of your listeners don't know what that means, it literally means the process of becoming a mother. So it's similar to adolescence, matrescence, and patrescence is... Um, transition to fatherhood. It's an anthropological term which was coined in the 70s by um, the late American anthropologist Dana Raphael. So I um, I found this term deeply transformative, liberating and um, life-changing. So when I had my first child I'd never heard the word matrescence and and really I had no idea of what becoming a mother entailed in terms of what it would how it would change me so of course I knew that it would be probably you know the most the biggest challenge the most important responsibility you know of my life Um, I knew that you know I carried and gave birth to my children I knew that obviously that would be a big change Um, But I thought it would be a transient change. I thought it was kind of, um, you know, a nine month kind of bit of a hormonal experience. And, you know, that my body was kind of like a pot or a box and that she would grow within it and then she would be born. And then I would just go back to who I was before, you know, and have a a little bit of maternity leave and then be able to go back to work in the same way. Um, And, you know, I knew a little bit about postnatal depression and baby blues, but I really knew nothing about actually how seismic the brain changes are in pregnancy and in early motherhood, how vulnerable that can make some women, um, and you know what an existential experience it can be. So to cut quite a long story short, um, I kind of found those that first year um, quite shocking actually, quite bewildering, very isolating, you know, the experience of modern motherhood can be very isolating in our societies Um, and I I thought there was something quite wrong with me you know that this was meant to be the happiest time of my life she was a much wanted child you know a spectacular baby as all babies are Um, you know and of course there was much joy 
but the the kind of full spectrum of the emotional experience of you know stress fear worry you know grief anger sometimes really took me by surprise and for a long time I thought there was something wrong with me um and I was I was diagnosed with postnatal depression which you know I responded to treatment really quickly which was great but the the really big change for me was nine months in still feeling very kind of not myself and confused by the insti really the social institution of motherhood as well I read this word matrescence in an article in the New York Times by the reproductive psychiatrist Alexandra Sachs. It was called The Birth of a Mother. And she wrote about um, this term and said that, you know, cultures and societies across the world have this sense of the newborn mother and this, you know, the, these rituals and rites and ways of holding the mother in that transitional stage. Um, and I, I just found that it made my shoulders drop, I could breathe, I just thought to myself, wow, you know, this is a significant transition and developmental stage which actually my kind of culture and society has really neglected for a lot of different reasons, I'd say. Um, and, you know, I called my book that, it's my book, Matrescence, is not, you know, it's not, I'm not an expert on you know, to to write about matrescence, you'd have to write you know, hundreds of volumes of book. You know, everyone's matrescence is different. There's thousands of ways of being a mother. Um, but I wanted to call the book that and write about it because it felt like a really important way of um, bringing language or thinking about this, you know, time which can be really vulnerable. I appreciate that you you compare it to adolescence because that feels like something, a period of change in, uh, in personhood that's very well understood by us because we've all experienced it. And, and when I think about adolescence, I've got teenagers, I, you know, sometimes they wake up and it feels as though they're in a brand new body from what they were in yesterday. Uh, their voices are changing, their emotions are all over the map, their bodies are changing. What changes did you notice specifically in women's bodies, I guess, to start in their brains, in their bodies, that happened when they became pregnant that lasted a lot longer than you had initially thought they would? Sure. So I think one of the most like interesting and exciting areas of research, which is really just emerging in the last kind of five to 10 years, is um, the neuroscience of the maternal brain and the parental brain. So I didn't know about any of this when I had my first child. I've had two children subsequently. And in those early months when my daughter had been born, I just felt that my brain was different. Um, I'm not talking about the kind of cliched, you know, misnomer of baby brain, which actually the research shows that although, you know, with sleep deprivation, there might be some memory loss, actually the brain in motherhood becomes you know, fine-tuned to do a really important job. So the idea that it becomes a kind of mush is just complete rubbish. Um, but I, I found that I, I couldn't really you know, focus on, I was so focused on the baby in a way that it made me feel like my brain had kind of been hijacked. So I noticed that you know, if, I, if I tried to sit with a friend, for example, I couldn't stop staring at her or I could barely, you know, I couldn't really listen in the, in the way I used to before. And, and I guess, you know, naively, I suppose, in some ways, that took me by surprise because, of course, I knew that, you know, I had this protective instinct to love and care for her. But it really felt that my brain was different. And, you know, I know now that that is the case. So fortunately for me, with the year my daughter was born, 2016, was the year this landmark, amazing, groundbreaking piece of work was published by neuroscientists led by Elselina Huxma, which found that pregnancy renders pronounced and significant changes to the brain. Um, it changes the brain in multiple different areas to the point where if you look at women brains that have been pregnant compared to not, that you can, you can tell if, if they're pregnant or not. Um, and I found just looking at those changes and learning about them was very grounding and soothing and kind of just made a lot of sense to the to, to how I was feeling. Um, and of course, the, the research is also showing us, um, you know, father brains change, caregiver brains, 
non-gestational mother brains adopt. I mean, no one needs to know this, but adoptive parents' um, brains changes. I mean, it'll be obvious to anyone who's a parent listening who hasn't carried a child that it's a distinct biological experience um, becoming a parent. But I suppose pregnancy has this kind of unique, very dramatic um level of hormonal change so another aspect that I learned about which which really surprised me I suppose was just how enormous the hormonal changes are I mean of course we you know I thought of pregnancy as a hormonal experience but you know some of these hormones are changing kind of thousands of times over and and some of them are hormones that have never been in the body before um and I guess one of the reasons why I think this work is really important is because we do expect women to bounce back very quickly, I think, from pregnancy and birth. And we also don't adequately give women all the information. I mean, there's not enough research for a start, but we minimise, I think, as a society, um, the impacts of pregnancy and birth and early motherhood. And we don't, we, it's under research, it's underfunded, um, it's underwritten. So, um, you know, I guess my, my story is quite a personal one. My book is quite personal. And my experience has been of, um, you know, having mental health difficulties in early motherhood and also having um, uh, impacts of birth on my body, which will have remained and, and will remain. Um, and, you know, all diff there's all different ways of becoming mothers, obviously, and, and the impact on the body. But I think that um, it felt important to me to write, and it, and it felt difficult, but to write my the story of my body and my experience of becoming a mother, because, I will end on this, I know this is a really long answer, but what I saw um, was just a lot of shame and a lot of stigma and a lot of kind of... Um, women feeling silenced and that they couldn't talk about their experience because there were so many taboos around the female and maternal body. Listen to the full episode wherever podcasts are found.